question that you have just um, asked. Um, congratulations, Pastor Itwa, on your birthday. Um, one of the most important things for us is to realize that Africa is very important to the world. In fact, it's actually the most important continent, not because I'm African, but because it contains 80% of everything the world needs. Um, they've done DNA studies, and they found that the DNA strands of creatures determine their level of intelligence. Um, they found um, apes and chimpanzees have about four strands. Europeans, the white race, have about six, and Africans have nine. Which means that Africans are, I mean, this is, this is science, not anybody feeling one way or the other. And um, the proof of it is that civilization started in Africa. And this proof can be found in museums in the UK. So if you go to the Liverpool Museum in the UK, you will actually see where they have themselves written that the first tools were found in Africa. So um, the question is, how come the seat of civilization has been, become you know, the, like the base? And it starts with um, a bit of corruption, but first of all, colonization. Many times we think that theory is impractical, but we're all victims of different theories. Africa was doing very well pre-colonial times. We never eradicated women to domestic affairs. There were female queens and female warriors. We understood that we needed both men and women. We also had herbs that took care of all the ailments. In fact, from cesarean sections to vaccinations to even the internet were developed by Africans. But even the light bulb we all attribute to Thomas Edison, there's actually a black guy called Thomas Natalan who is responsible for the carbon filament that allows the ball you know, to remain on. So the ball, if the ball dies, it's useless. So how come none of us have ever heard about um, this Louis Natalan? We only hear about Thomas Edison. So what's the point I'm trying to make? That we have to come to a kind of renaissance, a self-awareness. Okay, so the two theories that held us captive, like the modernist theories and the dependentist theories, the first theory taught us that what is foreign is superior. And what is indigenous is primitive and backwards. And that was when we started embracing the foreign as superior and looking down on the traditional things that kept us alive, managed climate change, ensured we had enough food to eat. All societies were self-sufficient. Indeed, even the educational system was such that we didn't even have unemployment because we had an inclusive system of apprenticeship that ensured that everybody learned something. So you had families of blacksmiths, families of fishermen, families of herbalists, you know, the carvers. So there was a function for every family, and everybody learned from childhood what to do. Now, Koreanism brought us personal education, which isn't bad, just that it sort of removed our minds from being self-sufficient to seeking paid employment. And we saw it as superior. But instead, it has made all of us, including our educational institutions, remain in a situation where rather than train people to be leaders, okay, they say, Spider-Man says, with great knowledge comes great responsibility. Great power comes with great responsibility. Knowledge is power. How come it isn't those who have the education that transform society? Most of those who run SMEs are illiterate. They are not schooled. And yet, they contribute 50% to the GDP. They are responsible for 96% of the total employment in the country. Not the banks, not the governments, not the oil companies. So obviously there's something wrong with the way we're thinking. And we need to sort of go back to our psyche. So to summarize, what I'm trying to hear say here simply is that our educational systems need to be decolonized. We need to begin to develop more job creators and not pursue job creating, creating job seekers. So it is sad that people graduate from school and they're so helpless. Whereas, you go to the markets, those who don't go to school are making millions and billions. Doesn't make sense. So time has come for us to begin to think about how to review our curriculum so that we produce the kind of leaders that Africa needs. And the entrepreneurial mindset is one of problem solving and continuous improvement. That's the mindset that has created Europe and America to what they are today. It's the mindset we had before colonialism came and changed the way we educate people and the way we think. So we need to go back to the basics, to believe in ourselves again. 
and begin to think about how we can get those in charge of our educational institution to do a to revamp our curriculum. We should be producing impact-driven entrepreneurs for national transformation. Thank you. Put your hands together. So you see why it was important to bring Professor Henrietta up here. It is about a paradigm shift so that we graduate people who can create jobs, create employment.